everybody, God is so good and truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. I came to lift up and magnify the name of our Lord today, Jesus, hallelujah, with one of my favorite passages found in the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I want to begin reading in your hearing from verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, talking about Jesus, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, hallelujah, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O oh God. And if I was going to put a title on this, I would just say to you today, it is done. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. God, it gives us hope. It gives us strength, Father God. It gives us direction and it shows us you. That's the most important part, Father. We can see you in your word. We can see the pathway that Jesus was going to take as well, Old Testament and New Testament. For that, I give you praise. Father, I pray that your word would go forth in clarity and that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, my Messiah, our Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. I get so excited when I read this passage of scripture. Old Testament, all the prophets, they were prophesying about our Savior. You know, even God getting the children of Israel ready for Jesus to come through that line, through David, for his king, as, as God promised to David, that a king from his bloodline would sit on, his heritage would sit on the throne forever. And didn't Jesus fulfill that when he came? Hallelujah. But I love how, you know, the word of God, when it went forth from the prophets, it came to pass. And that's something, let's park it right here for a second. God's word will come to pass. If God has spoken it, it shall happen. Everything that the Old Testament and the prophets prophesied about Jesus when he walked on this earth, it came to pass. This passage of scripture in um, Hebrews 10 is also found in Psalms 40. So Jesus was just repeating what had been already spoken of him in the Old Testament. See, God got tired of, you know, the burnt offerings and God knew that that would not take away the sin of the world entirety. You know, the Gentiles, what could we have done? Gentiles didn't sacrifice bulls and all these offerings that the Jewish and the Is children of Israel did. We never had part in that. How was our sin going to get taken care of? Oh, God had a plan. He knew it from the beginning, even before time began. Now, oh, hallelujah. He knew that Jesus was going to come. He knew that the Son of God was going to walk on this earth and he knew that the son of God hallelujah Jesus was going to fulfill that sin debt that requirement you know to wipe away sins once and for all can you imagine all of the animals and the bulls and the goats and the pigeons and all of those animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament, you know, to take away sin temporarily. But Jesus came in the volume of the book, hallelujah, to take away sin forever, hallelujah. He did it for us and for that, I give him praise. It is done. Jesus has already paid the price for our sins. Now we can have this relationship with God. To some that might sound minimal, but I want to tell you tonight, the greatest thing that has ever happened to me is that day when I gave my life to the Lord, that day when I began to build my relationship with God, that day when I knew that I had someone who was on my side, who owned a cattle on a thousand hills, who said that if God be 
before you who can be against you. Hallelujah. Who says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Who created all things. Think about it. God created everything. He even created that enemy of our soul, the devil. And if God created it, then God knows all about it. God knows how it thinks and how it acts. And God knows that if he created it, he can uncreate anything as well. Hallelujah. He can wipe it out. Hallelujah. So I thank God today that we serve a merciful God. I thank God today that we serve a kind and a loving God who was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation knowledge. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he gave his very best. Heaven sent Jesus to wash away the sin. He left heaven. Can you think about that for a second? He left glory to come here to be mistreated, hallelujah, abused, and crucified. He did it without saying a mumbling word for you and for I, but that's not where the story is, hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that three days later, our Savior got up from that grave, hallelujah, and because he got up, we can get up as well, hallelujah. Because he got up, we now have eternity, hallelujah, eternal life. Because Jesus got up, he now defeated the devil, hallelujah. He made a public a public spectacle out of the enemy. Hallelujah. And he has told us, behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents, over demons, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has told us that I go to the Father. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hi, yada. Hey, glory. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He said, it's expedient that I should return to the Father. Because he was going to send the helper, the comforter, our teacher, our guide, the one, our paraclete, you know, the one that walks alongside of us, the one that gives us wisdom and speaks to us and tells us what to do and how to do it and how to please God and intercedes for us in groanings which cannot be uttered in praying. Hallelujah. When we pray in the spirit, he knows the Father. Hey, glory. He knows the Father and he knows how we should be praying. Oh, we are blessed people. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Oh, that the church would be one. Oh, that the church would unite in strength and in power, you know, magnifying our God so that the world will see that we are one. And when the world sees that the church is one, when the world sees the power of God working through us through unity, hallelujah, because when they were in the upper room, what? They were all on one accord. When the apostle was in jail, the people were in the house praying all on one accord, not fighting and talking about each other on the internet. Oh, I declare today that you need to stop it. Hallelujah. You need to stop talking about your brothers and your sisters and begin to lift everyone up. Hallelujah. And come together against this devil that is on the loose in our world. Uh, you know, while we're fighting in the background, this devil is on the loose in the world, destroying our country, destroying the children. Hallelujah. Wake up. The church, wake up. Wake up out of your sleep. Hallelujah. And begin to fight the real enemy. For the Bible says uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, this devil that is on the loose, that's our enemy. This evil one that wants to kill, steal, and destroy, that's the one that we pray against. Uh, that's the one that we plead the blood of Jesus against. Uh, that's the one that we go into war when we pray and fast and seek the face of God. Oh, the Bible says if my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, are you called by his name? You should be humbling yourself, praying and seeking his face. Hallelujah, asking for mercy for God over our land, over our children, over all that the enemy, I'm talking about the devil who's trying to destroy God's people. Hallelujah. So I came to let you know, yes, we got a devil on the loose, but we got a God that says uh, that nothing is impossible with him. Is there anything too hard for our God? Uh, he already 
showed us his power. He also demonstrated all throughout the Old Testament, opening up the Red Sea, delivering his people out of fire, delivering his people out of the, you know, lion's den, delivering Israel with a mighty hand, delivering the prophets, delivering David, hallelujah, and all that called upon the name of Jesus. Have you called on the name of the Lord? Are you yet trusting in God? Nothing can help us but God. Nothing can deliver us but the mighty hand of God. And I heard that God hears the cries of his people. Have you cried out to God? Have you asked him to help? Have you asked him to deliver you? Hallelujah. Have you asked him to arise, oh God, and let your enemies be scattered? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Have you asked him to look upon your affliction and deliver you? Hallelujah. We serve a God that can do it. We serve a God that can fix it. We serve a God that is mightier than all. Hallelujah. Do you yet believe? Jesus said all things are possible to him who believes. Do you believe in your God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is just a prayer away. Why? Because Jesus has come in the volume of the book. Hallelujah. He took away sin and now we have a relationship with God. God the Father, we can go in and cry, Abba Father. We can go behind the veil now because our great high priest, Jesus, has gone in higher than a Shanda. He's gone in once already. Hallelujah. And he's now in heaven. Hallelujah. He's now mediating for us. Uh, he's now speaking on our behalf. Uh, he's now declaring uh, that upon this rock I build my church uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail. Uh, do you believe? Hallelujah. Do you believe we are the church? Hallelujah. We are the ones that have not bowed the knee to Baal. Uh, hey, glory. We are the ones that are looking for our salvation in the Lord. Uh, I mean our salvation upon this affliction that we are in in this world. Uh, this all that is going on, we're looking to God. We're not looking to man, but we're looking to God. Are you the church of the living God? Hey, the church that had power, the church that was healing and delivering and setting free. We are still the church. Hallelujah. And we still name the name of Jesus, our Messiah, who is the head of the church. Hallelujah. And he is undefeated. Glory be to God. And I want you to know as I close, just as the Old Testament prophesied about our Lord and Savior coming in the volume of the book, I want you to know that also if you peek over into Revelation, the end, I want to let you know that Jesus is soon to return. No man knows the day or the hour, but every day we get closer. We're one day closer. Hallelujah. Only God knows when. Hallelujah. That trumpet is going to sound. But if you can hear my voice today, God is calling you today. He's calling you to turn it over to him. He's calling you to get right with him. He's calling you to deny yourself and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm reminded of the time of Noah. Oh, they were partying. They were doing everything that they wanted to do. And Noah was just a building. He was just a preaching and a just a building. Just a preaching and a building. No one would listen until the rain came. And the Bible declares that God shut the door. No one could get in. It was too late. Oh, don't let it be said too late. I'm also reminded of the evil that took place in Sodom and Gomorrah. And God had mercy on Lot and his family. And God allowed Lot and his family to leave. And the Bible declares that fire and brimstone came from heaven. Oh, don't let it be said too late. The Bible declares, many don't like to talk about it, but I'm going to tell you about it today. Hey, glory! I'm going to tell you because I don't want your blood on my hand. I want you to know that if you are in your sin and you die, the Bible says that there is a place called hell. There is a lake of fire where the worm is not quenched, you know, where your thirst is not quenched, where there's a lake of fire. Think about that for a second. We don't even like when grease touch, touch us. We don't like when a little, you know, we're lighting something on the grill or something and we get a little feel of the hot flame. Can you imagine spending eternity in hell and you're there forever and ever and ever and ever? 
God's giving you the opportunity today to give your life to him. Hallelujah. Learn to love him. It's not just so you're saved from hell, but it's because God loves you and he wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants to take care of you. He wants to be your father. He wants to be your provider. He wants to be your confidant. He wants to be the one that you turn to when you need help. Oh, give your life to the Lord. Jesus has already made it possible. It is done. All you got to do is accept Jesus into your life today. And at the end of this message, there will be a prayer that you can say. But I close with my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do the will, to do your will, oh God. I want you to know today that God loves you. I love you. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, give your life to the Lord and keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you. One of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sin. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.